All right, well, time is a-wasting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 21st ApacheCon Lightning Talks. And if you wonder where I got that number 21st. So if you wonder where I got the number 21st, I made it up. Um, I believe, if I'm counting correctly, however, there have been 21 incarnations of the Lightning Talks. And so I will try my best to be Brian Fitzpatrick. And, uh, you know, not everybody can pull it off. He barely manages it. There are only three rules when it comes to lightning talks. The first one, and this is a traditional rule, there are no slides unless your name is Rich Bowen. Um, the second rule is that uh, you only have five minutes unless you bribe me. And the third rule is that your talk may be in, must be in some way related to the Apache Software Foundation. That relation may be as tenuous as you like. Uh, we don't do product pitches. So, without any further announcement, I'm going to select randomly from the lengthy list that I have in front of me of uh, five. And uh, while people are speaking, I do encourage you to let me know if there's something you'd like to say. And in fact, I'm going to start off with a lightning talk of my own to give you a little bit of the flavor of the kind of talk that we're looking for. Hello, my name is Rich Bowen, and I am one of the producers of Feathercast.org. Feathercast is a not very frequent podcast about the Apache Software Foundation. We started out talking about various Apache projects, and um, I say we, it's now just me, as the other guy that's involved is no longer... Oh, I forgot to start the timer, didn't I? <laughs> Doggone it. Anyway, I wanted to mention that Feathercast is looking for help. If you would like to talk, if you like to listen, if you like to edit audio or publish podcasts, if you like to do transcriptions of podcasts, please let me know. Uh, Feathercast has died a slow death, and I expect that many of you are not even aware of it, but it, it used to be a very popular thing in the Apache community. We have quite a large archive up there of interviews about various Apache projects, and if you would like to help in any way, please let me know. So that was my Feathercast. It was less than a minute long. Hopefully most of yours will be more interesting. So we'd like to start with Bertrand Delacrata speaking on behalf of the Internationalization Choir. This one, you can have mine. Okay. Can, uh, yeah, would be good if have I didn't know you'd need more than that. Maybe we can arrange something. Yeah, I should have told you. That, uh, this is all very improvised and very risky. Or you can. So. Uh, yes. Come okay, so you guys around take the microphone this mic. here. All the three of you. I will take just one. You ready? Yes. Okay, so it's not easy to start this thing uh, for many reasons. I had three uh, singers for my choir. None of them is here. So I just found replacements pretty much at random around the room. That's the first challenge. Second challenge is we didn't rehearse. We were not going to rehearse anyway. This has to be risky, otherwise it's not fun. Um, I'm always amazed at the, you know, the diversity of languages, of cultures, of people that we have here. It's incredible. And, uh, you know, I-18N, internationalization is almost impossible to say, but it's a very important topic. So I thought, how can we uh, demonstrate that in an interesting way and hopefully maybe fun? I don't know, you guys are fun? Yeah, they are fun. So we're going to do a choir, kind of a special type of choir, um, which, uh, uh, you know, reflects on the, the, vari the variety, that's also a difficult word, word, the variety of the people that are here. So I give you the I-18N choir. I just have to re repeat the instructions because these guys have no clue what they, they have to do. So we'll have a little music. No, that's not that, that's a podcast. I don't want to play this one. <laughs> I told you it was risky.
we're going to have a little music, and uh, then we, we're going to, to not really sing, because we're not really singers, but just uh, say a few phrases. So I'm going to say it in French, and then Marvin is going to say it in English. Big hand for Marvin. <laughs> yeah. Und dann wird Ingo das auf Deutsch sagen auch. And then uh, Johan is going to say in Romanian. I'll only say Mulțumesc in Romanian, so it's very hard. So we're going to get started uh, soon, right now. It's difficult. I18 Choir, du futur. I18 Choir, uh, future choir. I18 N Chor, Zukunft Chor. Chor I18 Spen, Chor Viitor. On n'a rien à dire. We have nothing to say. <laughs> Wir haben nichts zu sagen. Nous avons nuit de spus. Mais on le dit de beaucoup de manières. We didn't rehearse. Wir haben das nicht geprobt. So we, this might be a mess. It is written le cœur, cœur rigolo. You have to repeat the same phrase as me. Oh, is that it? <laughs> yeah. I ate in choir. Risky choir. I18 Chor. Riskanter Chor. Chor I optisch bin. Chor riskant. On vient de différentes places, différents endroits. We come from many places. We come from many places. <laughs> We come from vielen Orten her. Venim din locuri multiple. Mais quand on est unis, nous sommes debout. But. Where? United we stand. But united we stand. Aber wir stehen trotzdem zusammen hier. Dar suntem uniți. I 18 ten le cœur, cœur du futur. I 18 choir, future choir. I 18 <laughs> chor, zukunft chor. Chor i optisch bin, chor <laughs> amusant. On n'a rien à dire. We have nothing to say. We have nothing to say. We have nothing to say. Nous avons nuit de spus. But we ride, ride, ride on the freeway. But we ride, ride, ride on the freeway. But we ride, ride, ride on the freeway. Da rulam, rulam, rulam pe autostrada. We found, found, found of the autobahn. We found, found, found on the freeway. <laughs> we found, found, found of the autobahn. <laughs> Rulam, rulam, rulam pe autostrada. But the fuel, fuel, fuel is running away. Say it in French. Oh, but in French you hold on it down. But the benzin, the benzin, that's with all. That I'm going for a combustible. We told you this was going to be hard, but it's fun to speak in different languages and still understand each other more or less. Many thanks to the choir. I want to remind you that the wine and beer that you're drinking is sponsored by Adobe. We all love Adobe. All right, next we have Joshua speaking about mod page speed. Come on. All right, well, have this or that. You ready? Ready. All right. Okay, so I'm Josh Morantz. I work at Google on making the web fast. Why do we want the web fast? Uh, because faster is better than slow. Fast makes you more money. Uh, we like to make web pages fast. Uh, we like to make our own web pages fast, and we want the entire web to be fast. So I work on some products related to this, but the message of this talk is um, if you want to make your web pages fast, there's a lot of things that you have to do. One of them is that you can use a really fast web server like Apache Traffic Server or Nginx or Apache HTTPD in event mode uh, with Keep Alive on. Those are all good choices, but it's not enough because one of the most impactful things that you can do is set up your web pages so that browsers can render them fast. 
a huge amount of the performance is lost if you, your images are bloated, if you, are, uh, you have blocking scripts in the head. These all dramatically impact the ability of a web browser to render your page. So what can you do about this? Well, the first thing you can do is you can buy two books written by Steve Satters. They were written about six years ago, and they're kind of the Bible of web front-end web performance optimization. Or you can start to use tools. You can use analysis tools, including an amazing tool written at AOL called Web Page Test, which can tell you what your website looks like from anywhere in the world using any browser and any network connection. Um, you can say, what does my web page look like from Dublin on a DSL line on IE8, regardless of whatever browser you have sitting in front of you. So before you make any changes, take a look at what your website looks like. So why aren't all websites fast? All these rules, you can buy the two books from Steve Souders, look them up on Amazon. Um, but they're kind of a pain. You have to read them, first of all. And then you have to um, go through and um, strip down all of the excess crap out of your images that you took off of your camera and you display in tiny thumbnails. You have to minify your JavaScript files and combine your CSS files together. And you have to do all of this. And it's kind of all kind of antithetical to the goal of making a maintainable website, which is also important because you want to make a nice website. So using automated tools can help with this, of which uh, Mod PageSpeed, which is what, uh, a tool that I work on, um, you basically download modpagespeed.so, install it in Apache, turn it on, and it does most of these things for you. Um, if you're interested, check out modpagespeed.com. Um, this was, we actually released Mod PageSpeed at ApacheCon in 2010, and since then it's grown from zero to well over 200,000 sites installed. Uh, it's now available as an option, a push button option on DreamHost, GoDaddy, a bunch of other hosting providers, and it's also supported by Edgecast, which is a, a content delivery network. Um, in October of last year, we launched our 1.0 version, so we have a stable release. Um, so the, uh, the benefits of using this module are basically the page goes faster. Why does it go faster? The main reason is that it crushes images way down. Almost all images on the web are way too big. About 60% of all bytes on the web, um, excluding video, are, uh, are images. And almost all of them are unnecessary because um, almost all images are served with a suboptimal content type with way too much detail for the resolution at which they're displayed. And this is kind of a pain to manage by hand, but tools can do this really easily. So uh, turn on Mod PageSpeed or an equivalent tool. There's lots of tools that do this. There are tools from Akamai, from Limelight, uh, from Strange Loop. Uh, there's our tool. Um, we're happy if the web is fast. Um, so turn on these tools and you'll cut your bandwidth in half, you'll cut your request count in half, and you'll generally make your pages 30 to 40% faster at least. Um, and I have all kinds of pretty graphics, which uh, you can see at another time. Um, so Mod PageSpeed is actually built out of a core C++ library, which has been ported to a number of servers. Apache HTTPD is the first one. It also works on Nginx, Apache Traffic Server, the Edgecast CDN, Google has a service that does this, and it's now available in Microsoft IIS. So I think that's about all the time I have. Um, so the bottom line is try mod page speed. Check out www.webpagetest.org to see how fast your site is. www.webpagetest.org slash compare lets you see how fast your web page would be if you used page speed. And um, modpagesp.com shows you everything else. Thank you. So clearly everyone else is a better master of timing than I am when it comes to giving these talks. All right. Next on our list, we have Noreen. And I did not actually get this title of her talk, but she's, uh... yeah. Did you already? Advice from my own meanderings.
Ladies, have we started? Lady? Yeah, there we go. Any minute now. Ladies and gentlemen of the open source community, participate. If I could offer you only one tip for the future, participation would be it. The long-term benefits of participation have been proved by scientists, whereas the rest of my advice has no basis more meaningful than my own meandering experience. I will dispense this advice now. Enjoy the power and beauty of your community. Oh, never mind. You will not understand the power and beauty of your community until they have faded. But trust me, in a year you'll look back in your version control system and recall in a way you can't grasp now the possibilities that lay before you and how fabulous your roadmap really was. You're not as buggy as you imagine. Don't worry about the number of contributors you have, or worry, but know that worrying is as effective as trying to fix a bug by chewing bubblegum. The real troubles in your project are apt to be things that never crossed your worried mind, the kind that blindside you at four o'clock on some idle Tuesday. Do one thing every day that you didn't think would work. Document. Don't be reckless with other people's patches, and don't put up with people who are reckless with yours. Code. Don't waste your time on jealousy. Sometimes you're ahead, sometimes you're behind. The race is long, and in the end, you have all the features you can handle. Remember the compliments, forget the insults. If you succeed in doing this, tell me how. Keep your old design docs, throw away your old flame wars. Test. Don't feel guilty if you don't know what you want to do with your code. The most interesting projects I know didn't know in 99 what they wanted to do about the Millennium Bug, and some of the most interesting projects I know still don't. Get plenty of peer review. Be kind to your wrists, you'll miss them when they're gone. Maybe you'll release, maybe you won't. Maybe you'll be forked, maybe you won't. Maybe you'll be in the attic by 2015, or maybe you'll be powering the White House in 2052. Whatever you do, don't congratulate yourself too much, or berate yourself either. Your choices are half chance, and so are everybody else's. Enjoy your community. Use it every way you can. Don't be afraid of it, or of what other people think of it. It's the greatest asset you'll ever have. Communicate, even if it's only with the other two people who showed up on your mailing list. Keep the README up to date, even if no one ever reads it. Do not read the comments. They will only make you angry. Get to know your related projects. You never know what they'll be bringing to your community. And be nice to your fellow contributors. They are the best link to your past and the people most likely to stick with you in the future. Understand that committers come and go, but for the precious few you should hold on to. Work hard to bridge the gaps in geography and lifestyle, because the older you get, the more you need the people you knew when your code base was young. Write an XML parser once, but quit before it makes you hard. Write a web framework once, but quit before it makes you soft. Travel. Accept certain inalienable truths. Code will get tangled, customers will misunderstand, you too will get old, and when you do, you'll fantasize that when you were young, your code was clean, your customers understood technology, and your C64 was user-friendly. Respect your peers. Don't expect anyone else to maintain your project. Maybe you have a docs team. Maybe you have some great maintenance folk. But you never know when either one will get carpal tunnel. Don't mess too much with your website, or by the time you're out of incubation, it will look like GeoCities. Be careful whose advice you buy, but be patient with those who supply it. Advice is a form of nostalgia. Dispensing it is a way of fishing the past from the bit bucket, wiping it off, putting interfaces over the ugly parts, and recycling it for more than it's worth. 
but trust me on the participation. Thank you. Thank you, Noreen. Next up, we have Shane, who is going to give us his latest installment of why he loves the ASF, this time governmentally. That would be governmentally why I love the ASF. Will there be singing? <coughs> I'm sorry that was cut this year. <clears throat> but you won't be sorry. Uh, good evening, my name is Shane Kirkru, and I am a lightning talk, Apache Con lightning talk junkie. Past Apache Cons have seen me share my love and my gift for song in the past for this great foundation, the ASF. Looking and collecting together the past lightning talks that I've given here at ApacheCon, I can say that I really, really love the internationally alphabetical, statistically naked ASF. But tonight, I will be talking about, governmentally, why I love the ASF. Now, many of you may have heard the news in the looming US budget crisis with uh, federal budget sequestrations. That is a significant cutting of federal funding across many programs across the, the whole country. Um, despite the influence that the ASF has through the installation of influential Apache members and committers within key areas of the federal government, including the White House and NASA, due to expected sequestration cuts coming, it is my sad duty to announce several changes to the well-known Apache way. Yes, I'd like to, allow, as, as Vice President of Brand Management, I'd like to lay out our bold new vision for what we will now be calling the no patchy way. Yes, let us embrace the new no patchy way. That's N-O-P-A-T-C-H-E space W-A-Y. So some of the changes that we will be announced as part of our new no patchy way will include a common saying we have is patches welcome. Well, sadly, due to the inefficiencies present in our system of undirected or misdirected or just plain lazy volunteers, all future code patches will require complete documentation, unit test scripts, full sample data before submission, plus a full waiver of liability. We are working on a JIRA plugin to enforce this. <laughs> Similarly, there is a tremendous amount of energy effectively wasted in long-winded consensus seeking on our many mailing lists. This kind of behavior all too often takes on a life of its own, and it distracts us from our real job here, which is putting our code into Apache projects. Therefore, we're making a change to our mailing lists. Any reply to a mail thread that starts with vote, all reply messages will only accept either the plus sign or the minus sign. All remaining content from your mail will be stripped. This will ensure a quick and definitive resolution for all issues without distracting tangents about principles or alternate viewpoints or paint colors for bike sheds. Um, also, to pr promote sanity for Apache committers worldwide, HTML emails are immediately banned from all lists. Thank you. Now, thank you. Due to the general trend in downsizing, we will also be spinning off the less um, interesting and exciting projects from the Apache Software Foundation. The overhead of supporting SVN, Git, 15 different wiki installations, and all the other legal, press, branding headaches that supporting these projects causes is not supportable under the no Apache way. Um, so notified projects will, will be sending out notifications shortly, uh, will be given one week to clean out their desks and to take their source code with them to their new home at SourceForge. Um, projects being notified should contact Rich Bowen for a free grief management consulting for themselves. Um, and as noted in our business panel this morning, corporate marketing teams worldwide have complained about the lack of roadmaps for Apache software projects and for the foundation itself. So therefore, in the upcoming months to address this key need that we have, the secret inner cabal called board-private-at will be pushing out detailed technical roadmaps to all of our Apache projects, or those that remain after our earlier spin-offs, of course. Now, similarly, to show that the Apache community is fully doing our part to save money for you, our users and customers in the world, we are announcing a, a reprise of an earlier critical cost-cutting idea brought up at actually a, a future, a previous ApacheCon lightning talk by Lars Eilebrecht in, in Europe. 
This key program will be rolled out across all of our projects as well as all of our UI screens. It's called Go to Black. So in the Go to Black program, all screens will be black with minimum text and graphics everywhere. So this will ensure that there is cost savings by monitor cost reduction for all of our customers worldwide. Now, I know there may be a lot of disappointment out there over these changes to the no Apache way that we are making here. And I do want to assure you that the announcement that our president, Jim Jag, made at the State of the Feather about the independence of Apache, that, that no one can buy a membership seat, that's, that's true. And I assure you it will remain strictly true in, in the literal sense. However, we do reserve the right to auction off key positions within the ASF to the highest bidder. Thank you. So we're sorry to announce these changes to the no Apache way, but uh, please, please don't worry. I can still categorically state that, yes, governmentally, I still love the ASF. Thank you, Shane. I appear to have lost my next speaker. Leif? He's gone. He escaped. So I would like to invite Jim up to speak about whatever it is that he's going to speak about. You never know with Jim. You never know. OK. This is called audience participation time, OK? Everyone who has a beer, OK, first of all, hold it. And we're all going to, at the same time, just play right on the top like this. Isn't that cool? <laughs> OK, that's the first thing. I've got two more to go. Secondly, who have I either pissed off or been a shift to on a mailing list? <laughs> raise your hand. Raise your hand. Joe, you're not raising your hand. you got to raise your hand. I apologize. Have a drink on me. <laughs> and secondly, no, thirdly, actually. These are really good. Thirdly, I really am Jim Jagelson. I promise that my key on the keys file in Subversion is real. Please sign my key. Thank you. So your time is running out to get on the exclusive list of Lightning Talk speakers. Uh, particularly since one of them has escaped, and we are almost now at the end of the list. So I'd like to invite Lewis John McGinney to speak about putting on small events. Hey, so. Seeing as we've, we've actually got a bar camp tonight, I thought I would come up and, well, Nick thought I would come up and say a wee bit about Apache bar camps. Um, so, we have a bar camp tonight and uh, the common denominator, the common feature for every single, oh, reset the timer. That's not fair, is it? Right, okay. So, there we go. Uh, I don't actually know. I might actually find out just now because this has been something I've been curious about for a while. If I'm actually the only Scottish person within the foundation <laughs> ever, <laughs> I, I think I am. Uh, there you go. Anyway, so we've got. Eh? <laughs> Speak what? American. Speak American. No, I st I, the last, you don't, you don't want to start speaking English. You don't want to suddenly drop dead, get struck by a lightning bolt. Uh, so, we have got a bar camp tonight, and, and for me, um, the first bar camp I was at was quite an intimid intimidating affair um, in Oxford, which the people in Oxford down in the south, deep south, um, don't typically think too highly, I would say, of us barbarians from up the north. 
And I'm not talking about scousers or any of the other social outcasts within the UK. I'm talking about the Glaswegians. Um, so, for me, the bar camp has always, originally, the idea for me was that it was going to be a bar. And uh, <laughs> we would be doing some things that typically are quite dear to my heart, uh, like drinking whiskey and uh, other things which are dear to my heart, like uh, drinking whiskey. <laughs> and um, so, but none of these things are actually true, and that's not the, the agenda in the bar camp. The bar camp's actually about um, waiting until the end of the bar camp and then drinking whiskey. <laughs> so, that, that's, that's hopefully what it puts on the agenda again tonight. Um, I'm sure we're going to have lots of interesting conversation going on up there. Uh, I don't have too much more interesting conversation just now. So, for the next wee while, um, I think I'm probably just going to talk about the enjoyment I've had so far at this Apache Con. It's my first time to Poland. Um, I was lucky enough to um, receive some financial assistance last year to, to make my way over from, from Glasgow to uh, Vancouver, which I had a great time up there. And uh, for me, uh, this has been eventful uh, this particular week for more than one or two reasons. Um, I've currently been walking around the last day or so with a bit of a limp. Um, I don't know who it was, and if you're here, I'm really, really sorry, but I took the opportunity to hijack somebody's racing bike uh, as we left the pub two nights ago. And um, the minute that I held, don't go anywhere near the tram track, <laughs> when I was doing about 100 mile an hour straight into the tram track and landed on my knee. So uh, please, if you see me stumbling out of a pub later on, don't hand me a bike or your car keys. <laughs> Just take me somewhere else and buy me another whiskey, and I'll, <laughs> and I'll certainly pay you back. But not across the road at the uh, executive tower, because the mall is too expensive. <laughs> so I'll probably tie it up there, and I'll probably see you up the stair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I see that Leaf never did come back, and uh, I might need to call on Steve Holden to uh, come give a talk that he said that he could give if I needed him to fill in. Steve, are you out there? Or did you escape as well? <clears throat> Meanwhile, anyone else want to fill in? Anybody else have something that they are just dying to say? and? Uh, Want to come up here and say it? I guess I can try. Take up a couple of minutes anyway. All right. Here is Steve to talk about whatever he's going to talk about. Well, I can talk a little bit about hey, security and government because I'm employed in the government circles with Oregon State Police and work with the FBI. And before I was coming here, I was researching some of the uh, laws on exports and export of technology. Come to find out, I'm, since I uh, don't, I'm not employed by any uh, major federal lab or encumbered by uh, non-disclosure agreements, and this is an open forum Everything is classified under a fundamental research and therefore is not exportable. I mean, you can, all, you can all be foreigners, I can be free to talk. But the laws look like they're very paranoid. And when I get frustrated with uh, politics, I end up uh, resort, resorting to some satire. My diatribe, I call the barbershop theory of political intelligence. Uh, what does it take? No, why do politicians avoid going to the barber? They're afraid of losing some of their intelligence. Why do they think military folks are dumb, stupid idiots? 
they have no hair. What does it take to be a politician nowadays but a big head of hair for the photo opportunities, the, bil the ability to talk, a stream of empty babble, and the $400 for a makeover? If they can't groom their perception, they have no intelligence. Just like a magician, they perfected the art of illusion to a fine art. Magicians do it with sleight of hand. Politicians do it with sleight of head. There's no science in political science, just the nonsense of non-science in the art of salesmanship. One thing they're good at, they're good salesmen. They can sell their grandmothers ducks, chickens, and lizards, and the piles of excrement with a lot of bull. So if you have an agenda that needs to be promoted, adopt a politician. He need not be able to understand the issues or the time to care, but just give him the sound bites that makes him feel good and he'll promote your cause during his filibusters. So when it comes to our elections, uh, what's the, no, whatever happened to Paul, whatever happened to, uh, oh well. <laughs> I've gone. <laughs> yes. I know you do. But whatever happened to statesmanship in politics? That takes too much critical thinking. And why, when it comes to our elections, the, the choices are amongst the lesser of evils? Because politicians, because statesmen no longer want the job. They don't want to, pe to put their families through the hell. And therefore, we still have the paranoia and we still have the security struggles and politicians don't understand. Thank you. For our last speaker of the evening, we have Steve Holden, who is our conference producer. And uh, I want to remind you once again that the, the uh, beer and wine were... Last speaker. There's got to be other people out here who wouldn't be up there with the lightning thoughts. One would think so, wouldn't one? One would. I could simply threaten to keep on speaking until somebody shuts me up by doing a lightning talk of their own. That should only take about a minute, I'd have thought. But I do want to remind you that the beer and wine is sponsored by Adobe. We all love Adobe. And that following this event, there is a mini bar camp event, and you are encouraged to attend that. So here's Steve. Oh, am I on? Sure. OK. So uh, I, when I agreed with Rick that I would do a lightning talk if, if there was a shortage. I didn't realize that you did lightning talks with the clock on the screens and I didn't have the opportunity to provide slides. So what I will do is I will give two lightning talks. The first one, so you could think of it as three if this is the introduction to the other two. <laughs> well, except for having interjected that one, maybe it's four now, I don't know. Anyway, I'll let you count. <clears throat> Oh, really? Nobody got anything else to say? So anyway, yes, the first talk I give is a, a lightning talk that I use to remind people that lightning talks don't actually have to take the full five minutes. And this is a lightning talk about how to give a short lightning talk. Thank you very much. So the second one is entitled Small... No, no, no. No, no, don't reset. God's sake, I'd be here all night. <coughs> no, no, free beer. Definitely do not reset. So the second one is called Making Small Positive Differences, and it's about how to try to change things in your world. And the reason a lot of people, well, I believe anyway, the reason a lot of people don't try and change things in their world is because they don't feel empowered to, they don't feel anyone's given them permission and the task seems overpoweringly daunting. So my approach to that is just to take a small part of the problem and make an improvement in there. So to give you a, <clears throat> a practical example, this lightning talk actually originated 
in Amsterdam, which is a city that I, I absolutely love. And uh, as I was going walking through Amsterdam, uh, as it happened, I'd been doing a bit of grocery shopping because I'd rented That's in a... That's a small positive improvement. A small positive improvement. I'll drink to that. <laughs> and now I have what we call in Yorkshire a balanced meal. There's a beer in each. <laughs> so anyway, yes, I was walking through Amsterdam with a bag of, uh, of groceries in each hand. And I came across this nice little seat next to a canal. Uh, well, the ground was covered with paper, you know, plastic bags and trash and bits of food and crap. And people had thrown uh, beer and soda cans in, into the bushes. So since the bags weren't particularly full, I took my groceries out of one bag and I put in the other. And uh, I took, you know, as much rubbish as I, as I could comfortably collect uh, with all the cans I could pick up. And then I, uh, oh, this, uh, should I uh, update the operating system? It's asking me if I want to do an install here. <laughs> uh, and I, I bundled it all up. I couldn't actually get it in the trash can, so I, I left it by the trash can where probably, thanks to my you know, kind influence, uh, it blew into the canal and drowned, you know, killed, killed a swan or something, I don't know. <clears throat> <laughs> kind of thing that happens to me, you know. But really, it, it's, it's all about, you know, you don't have to make a huge difference. You don't even have to do all the job. When, when I was picking the stuff up, I didn't you know, get down on my hands and knees and, and pick up minute pieces with a pair of tweezers. But when I'd, when I'd left, Amsterdam looked just that little bit better. I'd done a little something for it. I felt better about my relationship with Amsterdam. I felt more a part of the place. And really, I suppose that the reason I give this lightning talk is because I like to encourage people to, to take part in their community and to remind them that you do not have to, it's not like you don't have to write a whole HTTPD module. All you need to do is maybe, when you're reading the documentation and it's, oh, that's really badly worded, just send a, a note to the editor if you know who they are or raise an issue if you know how to. Uh, but anyway, just just make a small positive improvement. You don't need a 15-year commitment to the project. And with a million small positive improvements, you will be really surprised how much the overall picture changes. Thank you. Thank you all for coming to the Lightning Talks. It looks like Nick might have something to say. Yay, Nick. So, um, at the end of quite a few of our talks, we've said thank you. And I thought that um, maybe it's a chance to say thank you to a, a lot of people here. Because I know that we've got people here who've made large contributions and small contributions. And we don't necessarily do enough of a job of appreciating all of them. So, I think what we should do is try and say a few of the big thank yous and then some small thank yous. So, for, for some of the big thank yous, I know that We've got some sponsors in the room, people who've sponsored ApacheCon and the ASF. Um, that means people who've sponsored beer, people who've made it happen. So big thank you to all of our sponsors. Then we've got people who have helped organize this conference. That could be people like the Open Bastion, who've done a huge, huge, huge amount and put up with our tendency to maybe not respond to emails fast enough, give no answers or seven conflicting answers, uh, all the other wonderful volunteer things. Then there are people who've helped out by speaking. If we hadn't had any speakers, then, well, it would probably just be me and Steve looking a bit lost and probably very drunk. So to all of our speakers, thank you very much for coming and educating us. Then we've had all the kind people who've been running around, kind of making these things happen. We've got quite a few people who are wearing, I called them red shirts, and then Melissa told me off, burgundy shirts, who have been going around collecting up all the slides, which we've put all of yesterday's slides online. I think we'll be putting um, today's slides online tomorrow morning. They've been holding up the cards, making sure everything starts and stops. So to all those of you who've been helping make sure it all runs on time, thank you very much.
I know a lot of you have been tweeting and photographing and live blogging and helping to share the information with those of us who are here, but maybe in a different room, or the people who couldn't make it who want to know what's been going on. So to all those of you who've been participating through documenting, writing, tweeting, photographing, thank you very much. And finally, thank you to all of you who came. Because, again, if you hadn't come, it would beat me and Steve and a lot of sad looks. So thank you all for coming, and thank you all for making ApacheCon the wonderful community event that it is. And thank you, Nick. I believe that Jim has something more to say. OK, we're all a community, but we don't all know each other. So let's see how many people can in have introduce themselves in five minutes. Take the mic, say your name, pass it down. Go. My name is Henning. I'm Tom. Justin from Sydney, Australia. I'm Noreen. I know. Igor. Daniel. Jeff, North Carolina. I'm Mike from the planet Earth. Alan Carroll from Urbana. Jim Riggs. Sean I'm Steve, starting to feel like I live here. I'm Aaron. I'm, I'm Pradeep. Uh, I'm from Adobe, and the beer is on us. Yeah! <laughs> I'm Chris. Alan from Adobe. Uh, Josh from Google. Andiga, San Jose, Adobe. Tony from Expedia. Shall both follow eBay? Matthew from Ryan eBay. Hennig from eBay. Oops. Joel from Report Liquor. Mitch. Lionel from the Report Linker. Daniel Rogeri, St. Louis, Missouri. Steve Hathaway. Nick Richard Alden. Isabel. Wayne McCullough. Justin. Piyush Jen. Brian from Las Vegas. John Q. Ryan Brush. Jason VMware. Joe. Brian VMware. Brian Fox. Carl from Symantec. Christopher Tubbs. Todd. Dan. Jamin. Shahani. Kevin. Michael. Ben from Vienna. Creamy Goodness. <clears throat> Ron Austria. Brian, Be uh, Brian Bellendorf. Joe. Deb from Cambridge. Ryan Roser. Tom. Rich. Aaron No Pain. Roy. Jeff Alfresco. Arthur Hippo. Matt Franklin. Andrew Hart. Andrew. Don, open office. Shake. Shamir. Page. Shamir from Sina. Sia. Saminda. Inigo Montoya. Dean Chandler. <laughs> Yom Yam. David Missouri. Doug. Ben O'Day. Christian Bullock. Royce, speak on school. Chris. Paul Myers. Jackson Red. Oh. Ingo Rana. Prashan from Semantic. Carl Hall. Yolanda Gill, University of Southern California. Bertrand from Switzerland. Glenn Nethercutt. Tim Williams. <laughs> Dan John. Brighton. And we're going outside. Go. Bill. And now we're going outside and people are introducing themselves. Hi, I'm Leo. I'm Jared. Melissa, New point? Jersey. Your name? Jim Jay. Matthew. Remender. Chris Matt. Soto Bajmet. Wendell Fleming. Ryan. Dwayne. Nico Klein. Maarten Groot. Oliver. Mark. William. Fred. Steve. Lindsay. Hi, you won. Andre from Romania. Adrian, North Carolina. Rodrigo. Adolfo. Tomas, Czechoslovakia. So now we're all friends. We all know each other. And you talk four minutes. The Expedia event is up on the first floor. Uh, thank you all for coming. 
and have a wonderful rest of the conference. Oh, we have 50 seconds 50 left. Seconds left. I have 50 seconds left. So one very important thank you we did not get to do was we should thank Nick Birch, who is the Vice President of Conferences. Now, he may sometimes forget which email account he's supposed to read for a while, but he has done a tremendous amount of work both for this conference, uh, for other events, for making sure that Apache has kinds of things like this. So thank you for Nick Birch. And the other one is, as Steve mentioned earlier, a challenge to everyone. Whenever you work with another Apache project, and you try and figure out how to use their damn thing. And you say, where the heck is the you know, real readme? You have a readme, but it doesn't actually tell me what I need to know. Just submit a patch. You're the people, not from that project, who can actually explain what the heck that project is about. Put just that patch in, that'll help out. Thank you, and good night. See you all tomorrow.